This is Gradowski of WeAreChange.org. I am here in Dallas, Texas by the grassy knoll, and I am actually joined by the individual who released the Sapruder film. Robert, can you please tell us your full name and introduce yourself? My name is Robert Groden, G-R-O-D-E-N, and um, I'm uh, here in Dealey Plaza on the grassy knoll in front of the infamous stockade fence where the fatal shot was fired from. Can you tell us the history of the Zapruder film? How'd you get your hands on it? And how the whole story came to be that this video finally came out? Well, the film was taken here November 22, 1963 from a pedestal right over there by Abraham Zapruder, a dress manufacturer. Uh, the film was bought by Life magazine two days later, uh, and it was suppressed, withheld from public view from that time until 1975 when I released it on national television. I had worked for a laboratory in New York, uh, an optical house. They brought the original film to us, Life did, and uh, they asked us to blow it up to 35 millimeter. We did, and an extra copy was made. That's the one I showed on Goodnight America. Can you tell us why the film was suppressed? Why was this uh, such an important piece of history suppressed from the American people? The government wanted it suppressed. The Zapruder film, more than any other piece of evidence, shows that the fatal shot came from the front and blew the president to the rear. Of course, the official version at the time was that all the shots were fired from behind. This proved that that wasn't true. Can you tell us the impact that the Zapruder film had on the investigation of the assassination of JFK? It is impossible to overestimate or underestimate the amount of uh, effect that the film had. Uh, after I showed on Goodnight America, I was invited to Washington, D.C. to present the evidence before Congress. I did, and to my absolute amazement, two days later, Congressman Thomas Downing of Virginia introduced legislation to reopen the case. That led to the creation of the House Assassinations Committee. I was named staff photographic consultant to the committee, and uh, after a three-year investigation, the determination was made that, yes, there was, in fact, a conspiracy. And this is a congressional investigation that came out and officially said this? Yes, that's the last official word from the government. Uh, as, uh, as an organization, we at the Assassinations Committee uh, found out that uh, there was a conspiracy, but we ran out of time and money. We asked the Department of Justice to please investigate more than 100 new leads that we had uncovered. Nine years later, without investigating a single lead, the House of, Re I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the Department of Justice, that which we're laughing, they call the Department of Justice, formally closed the case. If you were guilty of the assassination and you wanted to confess, there's nowhere to go. Now, we're here on the 50th anniversary of the assassination. What do you hope to achieve? I mean, you're out here giving information. Where do you see things going? What do you hope this anniversary marks, and what do you hope people remember today? Well, we're here at the 50th anniversary now, and there's a lot of people here. But I'm here every week. I'm here, I've been here now for 19 years, every weekend with a few rare exceptions. Uh, my goal is to let people know that there is an alternative to the official fiction. The official fiction is that Oswald acted alone. Uh, we know that's not true. The government has admitted that that's not true. But the Sixth Floor Museum up there lies to everybody who walks in and tells them that it was the truth. Yes, and now we see mainstream media pushing the fact that it was a lone gunman and just making sure people don't understand anything uh, and don't understand the true history of it, even when Congress admitted that there's more to the story than we actually know. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for your work. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I, what I've been saying for all these years, it may be too late for justice, but it's never too late for the truth. May all the truth be known. Now. Thank you so much, Robert. Really appreciate that.